afternoon and welcome to Ask the Experts, our QuickBooks monthly panel show to help small businesses. I'm Faith Weller and I'm the marketing director here at Intuit in the UK and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here and talk to you about scaling up your business with some really important guests. A key part of scaling any business, it can actually be exciting, but also quite scary and daunting, particularly for first time business owners. Knowing who you need, what you need and when you need it and making sure that the employees that you're recruiting get paid correctly and be compliant can be incredibly daunting. So on today's show, we're going to be discussing how you can scale with your perfect team. We're going to be taking questions across YouTube, Facebook and LinkedIn. So please do share any questions you have in the live feed and we'll get back to them later. For me, I've recruited lots of people throughout my career, and I agree it can be a very daunting and stressful process. It's about whether you've got the right people, whether they're going to fit into the organization, whether they can scale up, are they going to be high performing, or are you going to need to give them a lot of coaching? There is so much to think about. And in fact, um, I saw recently this week that Lee posted on LinkedIn about you know values being incredibly important for the people that you're recruiting. Is that person going to fit in with the team and, you know, more importantly, the company values? At Cisco, at Intuit, our core values is stronger together. And this really does the importance of diverse voices and really getting everyone heard across the organisation. And we believe this also does apply to building out your teams as well. We also know as a small business owner, there is so much admin that you have to think about. You have to think about your national insurance, your P45, pensions, payments, and all of that. But at the heart of it is about the people, their lives and their families. At QuickWits, we provide a payroll solution that integrates into your accounting software. And more information can be seen about this in the chat if you would like to find out more. Now, for the main event, to chat all things building teams, um, scaling teams, high performance teams, we have three fantastic guests here today. They are Sabrina Stocker, and she's founder of Two Coms PR, Karina Lepore, Managing Director of Doe Artisan Bakehouse and Lee McQueen, founder and CEO of Phoenix 51. Thank you so much for being here and helping us fi find out more about how you've built out your workforce and your high performing teams. So to kick things off, I'd love to hear from you, Sabrina, a little bit about your business and how you got started. Thank you so much, Faith. And good morning for anyone or good afternoon for anyone tuning in. It's great to be here. Um, so a little bit about uh, my first ever business. I was 21 years old. I was running a tennis events company. And I, I guess talking firstly about how I really started and brought my first employee on was scary. It was really scary because of the amount of responsibility. It wasn't something that I could make a decision and go back on. Um, and having this first tennis tournament company, I had to make sure that my cash flow was up. I had to predict around three to six months in advance to make sure I had cash reserves in case anything went on. But I was thinking, OK, who is my first hire going to be and what can they bring to the table? And being an early, early startup, my first question was who else could make me make some money? That was my first question. My second question was, how can this person help me bring in some time? And I weighed up the two and I realized I was great at bringing in money, but my admin skills weren't exactly the best. So therefore I found somebody who could compensate my time, which is how I found um, that first employee. Now, throughout those three years, that scaled to a team of over 42 team members. Um, and we had loads of events going on. My current company has around 30 team members. And it's really, really exciting having think, OK, four or five years ago, I was hiring my first ever person and being able to scale, to find and to retain a team has been a really incredible journey. That's brilliant. It sounds like you scaled up really quickly and hopefully we can get some more tips from you uh, in, in shortly. So Karina, how about you? Hi, uh, similar message from Sabrina there. So excited to be here and uh, looking forward to the chat we're going to have soon. Um, so yeah, Managing Director of Doe Artisan Bakehouse. 
mine's a slightly different story from the start. So back in 2018, um, we founded Doe Bakery, but it's more, I started with my dad and my sister. So for me, it was literally us free. So I left from a successful career in retail, retail management with Marks and Spencers to then having like no salary, having to sort of make our way. It was a, it was, it was a struggle that first year. It was literally us free. So we then, I, I remember thinking, right, yeah, we're going to have to suddenly, you know, get some staff in here. We can't do everything ourselves. And that's the challenge that lots of small businesses face is trying to do everything. Um, I mean, sort of three, four years in now, we, yeah, team of 25, a uh, similar story to Sabrina, having to recruit. And ha another challenge we're going to have to talk about is actually lots of people don't see that I am HR. Like I, mm -hmm. in my company now, I still like to do the recruitment process myself because getting the right candidates and having the right people through the doors to represent you and your brand for me is like my ethos it's my most important thing and it still is so i just make sure i vet everyone that's coming through training coming through the doors and because it's a key it's crucial yeah and it's it's not even about you. recruiting staff it's about retaining the staff and um you know yeah onto it we talk about the great resignation but i mean that's a a really key point at the moment and you know can be quite stressful when you're having to keep thinking about you know that churning of staff so lee it how is, about you? yes right. hello hey <laughs> how are you getting on <laughs> Hi. Stuff. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay there so fantastic like lovely to be here and i have to say good morning and good afternoon and good evening because we've got a global audience here as you can see in the comments already um, uh, lots of people uh, are tuning in via YouTube and LinkedIn, of course, live from all over the, all over the world. So uh, welcome. Thanks very much for, for joining us. Uh, my name is Lee McQueen. I'm the founder of Phoenix 51, which is a digital platform that is enabling organizations across the globe to make data driven decisions about this exact subject, about hiring, about retaining staff. We've basically digitalized and virtualized the recruitment process. Uh, the people assessment process, enabling organizations, as I say, to, to, to take people analytics or data to make better informed decisions, growing their retention, year one retention by 20, 30, 40 percent in some instances. So that's kind of what we've been doing. My my growth over the last kind of 20 years is, is, is essentially been in recruitment. So uh, it, this this program is called RC, RC Expert. So maybe I am. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I've hired many people uh, during that period, but actually, as Sabrina and Karina both touched upon, when it's your own business, it's very different. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm one of these people that really looks at core values. So if you know where you're going as a business and you know what your core values are, and I think, Faith, you, you talked about this in, in the introduction, yeah. then actually you can start to really drive your recruitment process around them core values. You know, the types of individuals that you want to come and work for you is not necessarily just around skills. It's also about them core values, the competencies, the behaviors that they actually bring to your organization. Um, and what I've learned probably, uh, I'm probably a lot older than most of you. So what I've learned over, over my career is that um, you, you need to hire better people uh, th than yourself. Don't be afraid to hire people that are better than you. Um, we've scaled our team pretty quickly. I mean, I, I was actually um, ve very similar to Sabrina and Karina um, in terms of uh, thinking about how many people we've got. We've actually got 34 people that are either work or, or, or involved in the business at Phoenix 51, and we only launched in September 2020. So it, crazy scale up, but it's actually going on in, in our world. So hopefully I can uh, give you some advice and guidance on uh, if, you, if, if any of the audience and the viewers and the listeners are in the same boat. Brilliant. And I love I love what you said. I mean, I always say you're only as good as the team beneath you or, or, or the team that you have. That's the only way that you can be successful. Um, Lee, you talked a lot about hiring. Um, and so I just wanted to ask Sabrina, what was your experience of hiring your first employee, if you remember it? I do remember it vividly. I remember sitting um, at a coffee table in one of the big gyms within the UK and I had about eight different people come in and I was thinking you know what I need a friend and you know I was pretty young at that time so I was like Ellie come over quick I've got to hire somebody so she sat down with me my best friend at that time and we both interviewed we had absolutely no idea what we were doing um, and the first employee is actually probably my core employee that I, I wouldn't even call him employee I'd call him a a friend really now and a partner 
and he stayed with me through multiple different companies and he's helped me launch different companies because we work really, really well together. But it all started from trying to figure everything out. But something could have stopped me doing that as well. I could have thought, you know what, I'm not ready. And I pushed it back for months and months and I should have hired a lot earlier. But it was this limiting belief of I'm 21 years old and I'm paying somebody a salary and they're going to be reliant on me. Yeah. And it was actually that feeling of, okay, how do I sit down with somebody? And a lot of the time as well, I found everyone I was interviewing was older. They were 25, 30, 35. So it was also getting over the little bit of intimidation I felt at the moment of thinking somebody who has got more experience potentially is going to come and join my team. But very, very quickly, I found actually they're not buying into a salary and they're not buying into having a job. They're buying into working with me and building something together. And it was when I could find that ethos, I thought, yes, I found the person that I want to have some fun with and I want to really enjoy doing this with as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can definitely resonate with that. Karina, have you got anything to add on to Sabrina's comments? Oh, I think you might be on mute, Karina. Uh, or your sound might have gone. Okay, well, let's see if we can fix that. Um, Lee, you offered to give some uh, tips. And uh, we have a question here. What's the one bit of advice you were given by a previous boss that you now live by and apply with your team? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I have some, I've had some fantastic bosses, obviously Lord Sugar being one of them. Uh, when I set up Amscreen with, with Lord Sugar and his son, Simon, after winning The Apprentice back in 2008, um, one of the key pieces of advice that Lord Sugar gave me back then was keep things simple. Uh, I know uh, Karina would be able to talk a little bit more about working and partnering with Lord Sugar, of course. Um, so keeping things simple and, and making sure that that your your employees, your staff know where your vision is. I, I, I personally think leadership is about taking people on a journey um, and actually hiring somebody is one thing, but actually you want to take them on a journey with you as well. So whether or not, you know, um, that, that your journey is about, uh, you know, selling the business in three years time or five years time or whether or not the bit in, in, you're building a, a business for, for the next 10, 15 years or you're, you're going to be a corporate organization. You need to be able to explain that vision and that journey and bring people in based on that. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit of fun that I always have uh, a little like, like Sabrina mentioned earlier. I think it's important to have people that 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 you can get on with and you can have fun with because business is really serious, isn't it? And it's all kind yeah. of like, you know, such a serious thing and oh, you know, but actually having a bit of fun along the way is really cool. So I call it the crazy train. So, you know, pe people jump on the crazy train with me and that's our vision. That's the, the leadership of where we're going and what we're doing. So you know, I, I think it's having a bit of fun. I think it's keeping things simple. But also I, I touched on a bit, uh, upon it in my intro as well is, is hiring people that are be better than you at certain things. Yeah. We, we, we have um, a, a global pandemic about wasting talent, uh, in, in my belief, which is we hire people in our own image or we hire people based on a piece of paper, based on skills, when actually what we should be doing is hiring people based on their personality, on their behaviours, on their on their core values. Um, and and as a subsequent, uh, as a consequence to that, we waste the talent. So, it, you know, inevitably they don't work out in the organisation. So six months, seven months, eight months down the line, they leave for whatever reason, and then it's rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. And there's that, that, that talent waste piece comes in. So, you know, for me, hiring people based on the core values that, that, that share the same vision as you, you take them on that journey, um, but also uh, making sure that you're hiring people that are better than you at certain things. Now, just because you're the entrepreneur or just because you're the company owner, mark my words, you don't know it all. Uh, I, I, can, I can assure you of that. And therefore, you need to hire people around you that do know certain things better than you. Brilliant. Um, and then, um, Sabrina, do you have any advice on how best to retain staff? You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about retention, the importance of that. And, um, you know, there's been obviously difficult times over the last couple of years. And, you know, I, I don't know if this applies to your organisation, but have you started to think about hybrid working at all? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because looking at my business model now, we were a pandemic baby. We were born in 2020, the same as Lee. So the majority of my team are virtual and having from the, that from the very, very start has been really interesting. I do miss obviously having that in person, but it does allow everyone to be more flexible. In terms of retention, it's probably my favorite topic. And that ultimately is they like why you hired them. 
I think that really starts off at the very beginning of the recruitment process and being really clear with what their objectives are and where they're going to go to make sure it's the right job. And one part of that is having a really, really strong onboarding system. So one part that I like to do on a regular basis, but especially on the onboarding, is I'll give them loads of tasks because it means I like them as a person, but they can always learn. And my expectations of my team are that they learn with me and they grow with me, but they don't need to know everything when they first start. So I test them on different areas and we have a very, very simple Excel spreadsheet. We have the 20 different tasks that they've done and they say traffic like system, green, orange, red. What did you love to do? And I put that as green. Orange means it was OK and I can do it, but I just I will just do it if I need to. Red means that's really not for me. And then retention, keeping this model really, really simple. I do this with them every different three months. So they're constantly being able to try and give me feedback, but they're also developing in themselves and their career. And it allows them, especially in a startup, to be able to bounce around each other. So providing they're enjoying and they feel valued, but they can also see that their role is adapting and they're learning. And of course, if their role changes, their salary changes a little bit as well. It incentivizes them to retain because the worst thing for me is losing a core team member because I not only have to train them on the knowledge, but I have to do all the effort of firing, um, hiring them or hiring another version of them as well. So I really think that's super, super key there too. That's brilliant. I mean, I, I've just taken away a few tips from there. And I think, you know, sh being able to have development plans and clearly track progress of, you know, where, where employees are um, is absolutely valuable so they can see that path to uh, success. Corinna, welcome back. Can we hear you? <laughs> we still can't hear you. Am I back? Oh, yes, yes, hey. we hear you. Sorry, everyone. Just having a mayor. I feel like Lord Sugar. Every time I'm on a Zoom with him, there's someone, he's having a mayor or someone in the screen is having a mayor, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> normally him like, what's going on? But only um, me today, I'm back. So, um, Karina, we've we've had a little bit about uh, ch chatting about retention, but you know where I, where I want to really focus, uh, and hopefully you can add some uh, colour to this is how have you created high performing teams? Yeah. So before I sort of switched off, uh, I was going to pick up some points that Sabrina was making previous, um, just about the crucial thing for me for for ensuring I have high performing teams is. And I hear it every day, even yesterday from one of my staff members, was how I just address them and how I respect them. And sort of, I think leadership for me is so key. And the way I trust and instill these, you know, values, like we've been talking about values all day, into my team. And we have one main goal. They know my vision. It's their vision. Like Sabrina was saying, I've got my wingman. He's been with me for four years. It's not, Doe is not just my dream. Like he's on the bandwagon. And my one of my old store managers is say, like, you're on the bus or you're not on the bus. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I can be steering the ship, but very much I need them to do all the sales. Like this is what we need for good high performing teams is them to just believe in your drive and, and bring them along. I want them, I want us all to win. That's my like main thing. Yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. It's having that clear vision and strategy. And then, you know, you want people along behind you rather than yeah. you constantly having to, you know, whip whip them all into shape. Um, Lee, I'm sure you've got perspective on creating high performing teams. Well, I mean, Quinn just uh, said about getting on the bus. I was just talking about getting on the crazy train, right? So it's, a, yeah. it's a similar metaphor. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I touched upon it earlier. You know, creating high performing teams is, is about the vision and making sure that, the people that you're hiring believe in that vision. I mean, when I started this, my second business, Raw Talent, 10 years ago, it was a recruitment business based on not hiring on a CV because ultimately a piece of paper can't tell you how people react. It, it, can't, it cannot tell you how, how people handle pressure. It cannot tell you how people are going to uh, perform in, the, in that role. So we made a, an assessment-based recruitment organization, which is very similar to The Apprentice, right? Three, three of us on, out of the four of us here have been on The Apprentice journey. And The Apprentice journey, really, the BBC TV show, for, for, for those of you who don't know, um, is a giant assessment center, right? It's every week they're watching, they're looking, they're observing to see whether or not you've got the right skills, the right attitude, the right behaviors. So we create we created that. And there's a lot of people that wanted to come and work in recruitment, but didn't believe in not hiring on a CV. So they didn't they didn't get a job with with us with raw talent. So it's mm. really important that they believed in what we were doing. And if they don't believe in what we were doing, regardless of how good their qualifications are, how good they were as an individual, if they didn't believe, 
then they didn't come on board. They, they didn't get on board the crazy train. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, it's really absolutely. important that high performing teams are because we're all working to one one core value or we're all yeah. working to one particular goal. And that's where you can get the best out of your uh, about uh, of your team. I just want to touch one if I can. Now, my first ever hire in more talent, the, the recruitment, my second business that I started, um, was a guy called Ash Holmes. He stayed with me for seven years. Uh, I, I think he had six different promotions during that period of time. And I hired him because I knew somebody that knew him. And that was right. going to be one of my other top tips for, for, for the viewers and for the listeners is that maybe in your first hire, hire somebody that you can trust because mm. you're going to give a lot of your kind of your baby, if you like, your business away to them. Um, you know, Ash was in the office on his own while I was out, you know, visiting customers and clients during them early days. So I had to trust him with a lot of stuff, you know, finances, payroll, all of those, them sorts of things. Um, so I hired somebody that I knew either within my network or that my network knew of. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, I knew, absolutely. That, I, I knew that they wouldn't stitch me up. Yeah. That is a real hard thing, right? Especially when you're starting your first business. Exactly. And I, I don't think you can um, overvalue the, the, the importance of like peer to peer relationships um, and getting those recommendations. And, you know, going back to your values, like having someone you can trust that you can leave in the office or in your shop just to get on and, uh, and do things. Yeah. So we um, we have just under 10 minutes now. So if anyone would like to post any more questions in the Q&A, we'll get through as many as we can. I've already got a couple of here, which I'm going to um, ask the team. So uh, first of all, Sabrina, uh, we, we have a question from Peter on LinkedIn. What's your perspective on building a growth culture with a hybrid agency model being less reliant on location and more on talent acquisition, regardless of where they are? I love that. And um, good afternoon from where you're tuning in as well. Welcome from LinkedIn. Um, I love entrepreneurship. So giving team members the ability to create sub uh, revenue streams and then having a percentage of that sub revenue stream within my agency, because especially when I'm working virtually, there's no kind of knowing if what my team are doing because they're not physically with me. So therefore, if I have a writer and he's making say two, three thousand pounds a month, I'm saying, well, hey, that's great. If you can continue this quality in your writing yourself, then why don't you go build your own writing agency, overview all of their work. You get an income stream from overviewing their work. We don't have to find another writer because you're quality controlling everything. And they're more likely, again, going to the retention model, going to stay with me because I'm helping them on a personal level be able to increase their income more than what they could get generally on an hourly rate. And that amount allows them to have to level up their own high performance because they're thinking, oh, my goodness, I've got a new personal business opportunity. I'm helping the agency that I'm going to grow, but they're also going to help me. And that's really worked because now he's going to say, hey, I'm going to have to level up myself. And naturally, he's coming to his own decision that he has to be high performance rather than me saying to him, hey, go learn about how to be more productive or go learn how to create better quality um, articles. For him, he could go, I'm going to go learn this myself. And it's for me, when the team start to make their own decision about them wanting to level up, they're more likely to do it too. Yeah, brilliant answer. Thank you. Um, so I've got a question now from Louise on Twitter, um, and I'm going to ask Corinna this one. Um, who did you ask for help in the early days? I'm a new business owner looking to expand, but I'm nervous about getting things wrong, particularly when it comes to compliance. Oh, good question. And I've done a few panels this week. One was um, for like startups, exactly the same situation you're in. And basically the the majority thing for me was don't be scared to ask and network network use everyone around you so social media if you want to dm me after lee or sabrina go do it take it offline and we will answer reach out i used to do that i would just reach out to people who are already in my field so already in successful uh, bakery field i would ask if they answer they answer if they don't they don't it's then no loss um also accountants so yeah figures anything like that is not my thing so go and find an accountant, one you can trust, one, and this is something I learned the other day, actually, that 
if they then, if you've got someone who's a, your accountant, and they don't want to help you with numbers, go and get a new accountant because this is what they should be. Ha- as excited as I am talking about my business, this is how they should be with regards to talking about numbers and stuff. So if it's that that you're scared of, go and find a good accountant because they can help yeah. you in that area. Um, I think I've touched on that. So networking is key and just ask the questions. Absolutely. Yeah. It's often asking other people for advice. Who do you use for an accountant? Um, You're a small business owner and just getting those recommendations that we hear a lot. All right. One for you, Lee, then. Um, Carly on Facebook, she's asking, do you think it's better to employ people directly or work with teams of freelancers or agencies? When is the right time for each? Good question, Carly. Um, I, I mean, to, probably to answer that question, I'll give you the breakdown of, of our, my current team in, in Phoenix 51. So there's 34 of us, um, which has a mix of permanent, contracted and suppliers. So we probably do all of the above. And, and that's that's because sometimes timing wise, it isn't right to invest in a long term permanent member of staff for that particular function. Uh, to give you an example, we might need, in fact, accounting is, is a perfect example of that. Now, I've worked with my FD now for about seven years on different businesses that I've worked, uh, that I've um, that I've set up, but he's not a permanent member of staff. He runs his own business, exactly what Karina was talking about, and exactly what Serena, uh, um, Sabrina mentioned about in, 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 her, in her world before. So for, for, for me, I think it's really understanding what is it you want to keep in-house what expertise do you need to keep in house? And therefore that would make a decision around whether or not you bring this individual on permanently. Um, Or, you know, I I like the the interim or the contract level because it gives you an opportunity to get to know each other, especially as a startup. It's sometimes quite scary to say, okay, I'm going to pay this individual 50,000 pounds. I'm then going to pay a company um, NI on top of that, which is what best part of over just over 13% on top of that as well. And believe you me, that starts to build up very, very quickly in terms of cost. So, so actually, sometimes bringing on a, an interim or contractor just gives you a little bit of an opportunity to feel into what right, is this the right thing? Is this the right direction that we're going in? Um, and also for for that individual as well, like actually, do, do I want to work with with this organisation on a more permanent basis? So, what we've done in the early in the early times in the early days when we didn't have any cash um, because we set up from from obviously from scratch in a global pandemic, we started to. Well, I'd say beg and borrow. So ask people within your network, oh, could you come do a bit of work for us? This is what we've got. And really get experience in, but on a kind of a half a day a week or one day a week scenario, rather than that, having to hire 150, 200,000 pound a year candidate, yeah. you can actually bring them in and have them on, a, on an interim basis. So Carly, to be fair, it, it does depend on that situation um, of, yeah. of where you are at the moment. Brilliant. Great answer. Right. 30 seconds from each of you. I'm going to ask you a, a question. Uh, Kate asked this do- from Instagram. What's what's the best part of being an employer, in your opinion? So, Corinna, over to you. 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. Um, yeah. Best part of being an employer. Oh, God. Meeting new people, seeing the passion and drive that candidates that come through my doors have. Um seeing for me because i'm hospitality baby and seeing customer service when i have a customer give me feedback about my employees that it's done it for me that that's like a big big tick so yeah that's my sort of thing lee uh, seeing the growth, see, seeing yeah. them grow, you know, um, you know, br- bringing people into an organisation with potential um, is something that's really close to my heart and every, in all the businesses that I've set up or, or, or started and actually seeing them grow. So actually coming yeah. in at this level and then if they leave, then they leave at this level or they progress. I already mentioned Ash, six promotions, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And giving people, seeing them earn and work hard to get where they want to get to under our leadership is very rewarding. Brilliant, thank you. Sabrina? Um, Amazing question. Mine would say to see them grow on on an emotional level. So not only are they helping build something exciting and fun, which is obviously great, but seeing them get more confidence, seeing them have their levels of self-esteem, self-assurance, them coming up with new suggestions, them being new innovative, that's so exciting because it means that they're leveling up their mindset and that's not just with the business but that's holistically they make changes in their relationship in their life in their health choices and i think on that holistic whole it's amazing and and really inspiring to see 
Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you have any more questions that we do have an, a Facebook a page that's 24-7 where we have accountants and business owners, business experts answering questions. And I think you had to, a, a few free offers of help from these three today. If you are looking for a payroll solution, a reminder to check out QuickBooks Payroll, which fully integrates into QuickBooks. So I just want to say a big, big thank you to our guests today, Sabrina, Corinna and Lee and everyone that's tuned in. We've really enjoyed today's panel. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.